Hi there, so I wanted to make a quick video about using Vim or VI or whatever. I'm just going to use Vim because it's a little bit older um, or it's a little more recent. Um, it's been updated a little bit more. It's got a little more functionality, but um, well, you'll see. So Vim is a text editor. Um, just get on Matrix over here. There we go. So Matrix, um, sorry, Vim is a text editor. It's a kind of an old one. Um, let's go into scripts because I'm just going to look for something that I can work with. I don't want to do those ones. I'll go into Hewlett 101. Yeah, let's go to CD scripts. And let's, let's just open something like Vim countdown. Okay, so this will be my something that I can work with over here. So Vim is a text editor. Um, people find it difficult to use at first and then sometimes when you get used to it uh, you decide that you really like it and there are people who swear by Vim and will use it no matter what. Um, some, and there's like one reason, very important reason that I like to use it uh, for this course, which I'll hopefully get to later on. So, <clears throat> when we're working with Vim, um, we have three different modes. Okay, let me bring over sort of a more modern text editor. Um, so, this is something kind of like Notepad.exe on Windows. This is just sort of like a very basic text editor. I can type stuff in, and then you know, you basically get the idea. So, when we're working with this, we have three different things that we like to do. We want to navigate, and the way that we usually navigate is using the mouse to go and do stuff like that. Um, we also want to be inserting in text into this file or whatever it is, and we do that just with using the keyboard, obviously. Um, and then we might want to manipulate things and usually what we have is a GUI we have some menu bar kind of stuff up here that we can touch and you know like get different things that we can do you know um, so that's all well and good discard that um, when we're working with Vim we also have three different modes um, but since everything is in the terminal um, we have to use them differently or we have a different way of getting to them. So we basically have the same three things. We're saving options, changing options, we are navigating, and we're also inserting text, right? But the way that we do that is a little bit different. So when you just start off using Vim, um, you're in basically what I would call like normal mode or a navigation mode. And the way that you navigate is with the different keyboard keys. Okay, so for example, um, if I want to move down, um, the traditional way of doing that is using J. And then to move up is to use K. And you know, you'll J, K. To move left, you'd use L. Let's go over there. And to move left, you go and you use H, okay? So that's the basic navigation. Um, and you notice that all of your hands remain on the keyboard, which is part of the reason why uh, people find this to be so fast and so easy to work with. So this is navigation mode. I'll come back to it. But let's say that I'm going to go down here. Um, and then now I'm just going to actually I'll go all the way down so here's a couple more shortcuts if I use GG I get to the top of the file if I use capital G I get to the end of the file and so if I'm going over here now let's say that I want to um, insert some stuff okay so I can press I and so now I have entered text editing mode and all of my keys now are used to enter uh, basically text into this file okay and you'll notice that um, at the very bottom I've got a prompt saying I'm in insert mode which is great okay so typing 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 
get done typing stuff, hit escape. Now I'm back into um, navigation mode. And once again, K is being used to scroll up. J is being used to go down. That's basically it. So the thing that people get confused about is what mode they're in and then like they're trying to type something in and then they end up pressing a bunch of weird shortcut keys and navigation mode and then they have no idea what it's what's going on so if you can remember what mode you're in um, you're in really really good shape okay um, so that's navigation that's text editing and how do we how do we um, find all the options and different menu commands. Well, the way that we do that is by entering a, a colon and now I am ready to ask for different things. So you basically have to, what I do is just basically go online and look for the options that I'm interested in. Um, I'll show you a couple of the important ones right now. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I like line numbers. So I'm going to set number. I'm going to do that. So that turns on my um, line numbers, basically. I'm also going to set relative number. Okay. Um, so I like this for a couple of different reasons. You'll notice that I'm on line 13, basically here. And um, this gives me a relative number, so I can see if I want to go up um, eight lines. I can press K eight times, or I can also say 8K. Now I'm up, and I can see that I'm on line five, and it's kind of sort of justified to the left a little bit more, so I can see where I am. Um, if I want to go down 20 lines, I can just go 20J, and there I am. Okay, and I can still just navigate like that. That's totally fine. Okay. So this idea of being able to add numbers and do different things actually makes Vim really, really, really useful and handy. Um, so let me show you a bunch of other things that I can do with this. Um, so I've done, I've set some options. Um, I can also show you another one. I'm just going to type in color and hit tab and it will begin to um, it'll begin to autocomplete things for me. So you can use tab right here just to like uh, look at the different things that you can do with this. So I'll do color, I guess. I don't know. Let's try that. Okay, so I've changed my color scheme. This is useful if you are using different terminal colors and nothing is really showing up very well. Some more navigation now. Um, using W lets me go and basically um, proceed through the document through words. Um, so I know that one isn't a word, but like if we get down here, you can see that I'm sort of hitting this and I'm getting to the beginning letter of each word. And I can similarly combine this with a number. I can put in 12 W and I've moved to, well, 12 words. I've moved forward 12 words. I can use B and this does the same thing. I can go back. I can hit 4B and I'm going back four words. I can also use E to go to the end of words and just proceed like that. I can use the curly brackets to go by paragraphs. Okay. And again, I can just do like three like this. Totally fine. Um, and what else? Well, I can go, I can use the slash, and I can search. And you can see that these are being highlighted. I can use next n to go to the next one and just basically scroll through like that. Um, if I am programming and I get to a bracket over here, I can use the percent to get to the other side of it. So very quickly move around. Um, some other things that I can do. Let's go and enter a visual mode. So let's say that I'm over here and I can hit V. Now I have now entered visual mode and what I'm basically doing is beginning to select blocks of text. Okay. And once again, like all I, 
you know, I can very easily go and use this to, you know, basically highlight everything that's inside brackets very quickly. Okay. Now that I'm in visual mode, um, uh, maybe what I want to do is uh, to cut something. So the way that I cut stuff is with D. And I want to put this all the way down here. So maybe I can go down and just like here for some reason. And I'll hit P and I basically paste. Okay. Similarly, let's say I'll go 7K, something like this. I can hit capital V and this is going to select lines in visual block mode. Um, I can hit Y to copy something and then once again hit P to paste it. Okay. If you're not happy with something, we have undo. So you can use U to undo stuff and I can basically go and fix all the garbage that I've been doing. Um, other stuff to move, more navigation. Um, I can use dollar sign to go to the end of a line. I can use zero to get to the beginning of the line. And so let's say I want to go and um, let's say I'm going to move forward six words and I'm going to enter visual mode and then I can hit dollar sign and basically get to the end of the line and you know very quickly cut stuff or whatever. Some more stuff. Some more interesting things to do. What can I show you? Well, I have shown you how to yank, paste, copy, undo, stuff like that. Um, we have control P for autocomplete. That doesn't work yet because I haven't really typed anything, but let me go in, go over here. Um, you can notice that when I do O, I can basically sort of, I'm inserting a new line and I'm starting to write something there. So let me type in D O and hit control P and you can see that I've got a little bit of um, different options so we basically have autocomplete um, built into here right I'm also going to show you now um, some other things that we can do so we can use this to type in macros um, let me show you that I'm gonna hit uh, Q to start it off and then I basically um, I've never had to use more than 26 um, but I have different ways of recording macros so this is gonna be my first macro I'm gonna use a but you could use any other letters of the alphabet um, and I'll just start I'll hit enter and I'm going to say hi there and do something like this okay and then to stop recording I will hit Q again. Now, each time I want to repeat those actions, and it could be many different actions, it's really up to you. Um, hit the uh, at symbol and then the corresponding letter for whatever you did, right? So I can do this a whole bunch of times. And you, you can get very deep into this. You can basically program things with conditions and all kinds of stuff. It's uh, very useful. All right, so hopefully this begins to show how um, how useful of a tool this can be. Um, let me show you another th interesting thing. Um, so I'm going to enter visual mode over here. I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe I'll select more lines like this. Now, since I've done that, I'm still in visual mode. I can go into um, the command mode and you'll see that I've got sort of like this uh, thing over here. Um, what I can basically do is call a bunch of uh, shell commands. So what I'm gonna do is do a sort dash R. If you've seen other videos, you might know that this is going to basically randomize or shuffle the lines. So I can do this and I very quickly can shuffle up a bunch of stuff if you require. Um, I can also do things, let me go into command mode again and I can hit dot exclamation mark and then just uh, type in a command and the output from that command is going to be inserted right into my file. So a lot of times when I'm writing up lecture notes and things like that, I might tell you, um, okay, like here's, a, here's the command that I'm going to do. I'm going to do cat uh, example or something like that. 
and um, I don't think I have an example file like that in here, but let's find out. And I can do basically bash. I can go into command mode, hit this, and then just cat um, whatever for lecture. Okay. And what this will do is basically print out the output from that command into my file very quickly. Okay. So once we get done, there's a lot of different ways that we want to finish our document or whatever, right? We might want to uh, save our document. We can use W to write, and I will just give it like a new name maybe. Um, I could give it like, you know, a new file or something like that. If you want to save and exit, it's X. If you don't want to save, it's Q and exclamation mark usually you just um if you have already made let's just try with the queue and you can see um so you can see it gives you this warning no write since last change add an exclamation mark to override um, i don't want to save my changes because i basically completely botched up my uh nice script over here so i'm going to use this and uh that should basically end the video i think uh, i hope it was useful all right, thanks for watching.